South Africans put forward some truly excellent solutions. South Africans want dedicated corruption courts that are specialized in the understanding of gender processes, supply chain policies, and legislation governing public management of our finances. South Africans want high profile corruption cases to be prosecuted to demonstrate to the world and the corrupt within South Africa itself that we are serious about dealing with corruption. South Africans want fundamental reform of tender processes. I can tell you from what I saw as a mayor of the city of Johannesburg that the corrupt have become professionalized in the ability to sidestep safeguard in our tender processes. Our people believe that we need faster systems for service delivery coupled with greater transparency and real measures to combat corruption in our tender processes. Finally, South Africans want the reestablishment of the Scorpions in our country. We need a genuinely independent prosecutorial style in the investigative body that mercilessly hands down the corrupt. When the, when the Scorpions were shut down in 2009, they had a successful prosecution rate of over 90%. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have endless commissions of inquiry, words without action. The next issue South Africans put forward in greatest numbers was that of jobs and the economy. I would venture that this issue has gained greater prominence in the last week, as we have learned of the loss of between three to seven million jobs in South Africa in the coming months. On the subject of jobs and the economy, South Africans want the government to put an end to the employment of illegal immigrants. They want a coherent national economic policy to replace the Confucian means put forward, forward by our government. They want real support for small businesses and aggressive cutting of red tape compliance because small business is vastly under contributing in terms of the potential to create jobs and drive economic growth for our country. Of great importance, South Africans want the education system and curriculum of our country to be overworked by the relatively high spent per pupil. We are rolling out one of the worst education systems in the world. This is believed to be the root cause of, of many of our challenges. The next most prominent value issue was that of crime. South Africans were unanimous in their disapproval of their criminal justice system, most commonly described as dysfunctional. Most of the solutions put forward to fix our criminal justice system relate to the work of fixing subs and the NPA and expanding the capacity of visible policing, specialized policing and our detective services. Other issues emerged in this process, which include increase the number and capacity of our courts to speed up justice forced labor for prisoners to improve the country they have harmed, and education for boy children on how to respect and protect our women. It is worth mentioning here that many South Africans stand strongly behind either the reintroduction of the death penalty or looking up, locking up rapists and murderers and throwing away the keys. While it may not be possible in this forum to give expression to the many issues raised by South Africans and the solutions they have put forward, it is worth mentioning that illegal immigration, education, and inequality all feature as critical issues facing our country. It is necessary to point out that the underlying issue that put forward by South Africans is the failure of our political system. South Africans feel marginalized by a political system that is failing them on every level. In every issue raised in this, in this dialogue, South Africans recognize that politicians 
are failing to perform the will of the people of South Africa. We vote for political parties who choose their candidates for us. And when we are let down, we have no person to hold accountable at the next election. This has to change. In many cases, these issues overlap with issues of the economy, crime and corruption and gain greater prominence when understood in this way. We will be making full engagement and participation report available immediately to all South Africans because the contents of this report belong to the millions of South Africans who contributed to it. In January this year, after experiencing an enormous level of impatience by people of this country, I made the commitment that I'll be launching a new political party. I made this commitment because it became abundantly clear that South Africans want a political alternative that can unseat the ANC and bring change to our country. I made this commitment because there's a common understanding of what needs to be done to fix our country. Today, I can announce that I will be launching a new political party in August of this year. It is obviously difficult to be more precise with a date or an event in time, given the uncertainty that exists uh, from the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, pandemic. Nonetheless, I remain resolute. While some, some of the information and surprises relating to this party will have to, to wait until the launch, let me share with you what I can share with you right now. Despite this uncertainty, which promises to remain a feature of the months to come, I can, I can say that without any doubt that we will launch this political party to contest the 2021 local government elections next year. People often ask me, how is this new party going to be different from the parties that have come before us? For an example, Aha, on a light, Hearted note, I can emphatically say that I won't be kissing Helen anytime soon. On a serious note, ladies and gentlemen, I can share that we will not be contesting all municipalities in South Africa. This is the mistake that many new political parties actually make. They have contested all 278 municipalities as new politicians with, with only months to prepare for elections with the unambiguous outcome of gaining a councillor here and there. This is why they have failed. Our political party will identify municipalities that are strategic in nature and where we will win. We will govern in these municipalities and will demonstrate value by improving the lives of the people who live in those municipalities. On the basis of our service delivery achievement in these municipalities, we will take this value proposition to all South Africans in 2024, when we will contest for the provinces, for the presidency of, and the presidency of South Africa. I can say with certainty that we will absolutely be contesting the three metros in Houghton, where the ANC is already under 50% in Johannesburg, Swane, and Ukuruleni. There are other municipalities that, are, that we are considering and our structures on the ground are working with us to put in place a prerequisites to contest. Most important of which is credible, ethical and seven style leadership. Let me be clear. We have already started to grow the structures in every province of South Africa. We will not wait until 2021 to do so. We have already begun. We have spent hundreds of thousands of hours, I've been hundreds of hours during this lockdown, uh, engaging volunteers on, on, in all the provinces via online meeting platforms as the new township meetings of the future. These individuals are already organizing into structures on the ground that are starting to talk to South Africans about the political future of our country. It is clear that we will be receiving a lot of support from many dissolution supporters of current political parties. And we welcome them, and we welcome them with open arms. But 
our focus will be on the almost 19, 19 million South Africans of voting age who did not vote in, 2020, in 2019, outnumbering the, those who actually went out to vote. The South Africans are not apathetic. They live in the same country as the rest of us. It is in deep need of change and they, are care, and they also care about their country. They've just not been given a reason to vote, some for a very long time. In our online meetings with people across South Africa, it is already clear that many people joining us are confessing to be those who have given up on voting for the political parties in South Africa. Our new political party is going to offer these people a political home. We are now beginning the work of taking the submissions received through the People's Dialogue and engaging the brightest minds in our country as we develop the solutions blueprint for South Africa that we will launch with a new political party. We are scheduled to sit down with former members of the police, from generals to officers. We have patrolled our streets to gain their, their understanding of how we can fix South African police services. We will be sitting down with former members of the NPA and retired judges to see how we can fix our justice system. We will be engaging captains of industry, business owners, both big and small, economists, informal traders to craft our plan to grow the economy and create real jobs for our people. We will be sitting down with doctors, nurses, school teachers, school principals, academics, engineers, and the men and women who patrol our borders. Together, we will forge a blueprint for South Africa like none other seen before. We will not get lost in the high blow political black holes of ideology and policy like many political parties. We are going to focus on presenting solutions to South Africa's problems. By the time South Africans go to vote in 2021, they will know what we will do in government to address their greatest challenges. Our blueprint will be based on non-negotiable values that arose from the dialogue and the submissions of millions of our people of our country, South Africa. Firstly, we'll be a party that advances a free market economy. We will not compromise on this. We will not water this down. We will be the political party for South Africans who aspire to make something of themselves and their family through hard work. South Africans have made it clear that this is what they want, but they also want a just economy. Secondly, we'll be a party of non-racialism. South Africans are tired of being divided by politicians for their own political gain. We are one country, one people, one past with one future, even if we look different from one another. But for this to work, there must be social justice because we can never be a non-racial country as long as our past continues to define our future. This leads me to our third value, social justice. We will not stand for the building of a more just future for South Africa. Our inequality has to be addressed and cannot continue for generations. We need to address the legacy of our past, but not through the window dressing measures employed by our current government. We need to move away from punitive measures of redressing our unjust past. We will be designing an incentivized approach to redress that harnesses the power of the private sector to do what government has so fundamentally to do over the past 26 years. We need wholesale investment in the opportunities and education for those who have been left behind by 26 years of ANC government. Our goal must be the building of a strong middle class in South Africa that forms the majority of the people of our country. Fourthly, we'll be at the party of the rule of law. 
we will achieve a criminal justice system that delivers, that is harsh to criminals who should live in fear and compassionate to law-abiding people who should feel safe. Part of our commitment to the rule of law is an uncompromising principle to manage our borders. We will be a party that advocates for the people of the world to come to our country, but to come here legally and obey our laws once here in South Africa. I do not believe this is too much to ask. We'll change the political system. We will advocate for changing changes to our electoral system. We will act to live to live our principles. Our party will have a candidate election process run through meaning through community primaries. Aspirant candidates will be put forward by the party to you, the people of this country. Elections will be held before the main elections where you will tell us who your candidates should be. In 2021, we'll choose our candidates for councillors and mayors. And in 2024, you will choose your candidates for provincial parliaments, the National Assembly, premiers and presidential candidates. We will honor those outcomes and those are the names you will see on the ballot paper on the day of the elections. The same system will ensure that those elected the public representatives, if they let you down, they can be held account and be removed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is probably as far as we should go while ensuring that we still have some, some, some surprises in store for you when we launch our new political party in August. What is left for me is to pay homage to the people of, of our country, South Africa. We have withstood terrible hardships and indignities, but we have done so proudly as a people. We have engaged this platform and poured your hearts and souls into the discussions around a better and brighter future for our country. You are the foundation, the very bedrock upon which this new political party will be built. You have given the few rents and cents that you could spare to support this effort. I've actually been moved to the point of tears by the messages of pensioners who took two taxes to go to the bank and give us 20 rands that they really could not afford to give because they too believe that hope in South Africa is not lost. It is the business people of our country that gives me hope to go to bed every day to whom I will dedicate every minute going forward to deliver you a better South Africa for, for all of you. Together, we'll take our country back. Together, we'll turn it around. And together, we will make South Africa work. For that, I thank you. Michael, we're happy to really give you the floor. Thank you from my side. Thank you very much, Herman. Um, and I think at this point, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to turn to the members of the media um, so that you will have an opportunity to engage, to ask the questions that you would like to ask. I um, think in order to do so in the most orderly manner, may I ask that anyone who would like to raise a question uh, indicates their intent to do so in the comments section of the Zoom platform. Just provide us with your name and the media house that you represent, and then we'll take the questions in the order in which they come through. Um, again, I think we will also try to take about three questions at a time. Um, but in the meantime, we'll just wait to see um, you know, who would like to come forward via the comment section of the Zoom platform. All right, I uh, see we have a question from Faith Daniels from ENCA. Um, Faith, I'm going to unmute you now so that you can uh, pose your question. Um, I think you just need to accept the unmuting on your side. There we go. Uh, there we go. Thank you, Faith. 
Okay, I just, I, just, I have two questions. So the first one is related to the party name. And I just wanted to check that um, if we are looking at a relaunch with a party name in August, that's the first one. And um, number two, I wanted to check if um, uh, Mr. Mashaba can maybe explore more the, the economy side of, of the approach of the new party, given the fact that we are, um, we are operating in unusual circumstances uh, with COVID-19. I mean, it's all good and well to have a set of economic policies and principles, but how, do, how does a new party approach it differently and innovatively um, within the confines of what we are dealing with today? Okay, thank you very much, Faith. I see we have a couple of other questions, so we'll take three and then we'll turn for the answers if that's all right. Mm -hmm. um, so the next question I see is from Apiwe de Klerk from the Sunday Times. Um, Apiwe, I'm just going to uh, find you on my list to take you off mute. Uh, Piwe, we seem to be battling a little bit. I will come back to you in one moment, please. In the meantime, can I take Lizaka from News24? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Um, hi, Herman. This is uh, Lizaka here from News24. Um, just a couple of questions for you. Uh, with regards to, you say that you are planning to run in, um, in the three metros here in, in Gauteng. I'm just wondering if there's the municipalities, what other municipalities that you've identified? Because you speak of other municipalities, are they still within the province or in other provinces? Um, in terms of your members already, how many members do you have uh, in, in the party already who have signed up to the party? Um, also, I wanted to ask about coalitions. You you speak about Ahang not kissing, you don't want to kiss Helen's, uh, you're not going to kiss Helen anytime soon, but will you be kissing Julius maybe at some point? Um, what is the status of your relationship with the EFF? Will you be uh, um, still, will you have some sort of coalition? Do you have some sort of coalition plans or partnership plans with the EFF or any other party? And as well as, I wanted to ask around the lockdown. Um, ACDP just released a statement and we know the DA has been singing about this for some time that uh, the lockdown needs to end um, to allow for economic recovery. Um, what is your stance around uh, the lockdown? Thank you. Hello, Michael. Hello, Michael. Can you hear me? Yes, Herman, I'm here. We just have one yeah, more question. Uh, can we can we get a, can we get a third uh, question from uh, the like from Sunday Times? I, I couldn't I couldn't hear it, uh, them. Yes, that that's fine. Thank you. Here with the clerk, I'm bringing you in now. If that's all right. Okay. Th thanks, Michael. Uh, my one question is that uh, is it uh, can we assume that uh, Mr. Mataba will be. Uh, the party's mayoral candidate for Johannesburg. Um, uh, secondly, um, in terms of uh, how people join your party, uh, how is how is your system in terms of joining? Do they uh, join online and uh, they, uh, the fee and, and all of that? Um, and thirdly, um, who is funding you? Um, how are you raising funding uh, for your for your party? Uh, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you, Apiwe. Um, Herman, if we can turn to you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me try and really do my best uh, to uh, to really ask uh, to answer uh, most of the questions. And uh, colleagues and fellow South Africans, I hope you wouldn't mind that uh, some of the questions I'm going to be referring them to my team. Um, joined uh, as you are aware on the platform by our Director of Operations, uh, Mr. Funzi Gubeni, um, who joined us uh, two months ago, directly responsible for setting up of structures 
on the ground and I would really like to really give him the opportunity to ask, uh, to answer some of the, the questions. And obviously of a technical nature, I'm also joined by Andre Kutier. Andre was, has been really responsible throughout uh, this whole process of actually managing uh, all the inputs inputs coming through. But uh, let me uh, do my best in terms of uh, answering the, the questions that I feel comfortable to answer them myself, Faith, um, regarding the, uh, the name of the party. Actually, we had a very interesting Zoom meeting with my team yesterday, and uh, we've uh, taken a decision uh, uh, within the next week or so, where we can now start another process of engaging uh, our people, the 2.4 million people, or even more, to already start giving us a name, uh, uh, suggested names of the party. Because so the decision we have taken is that the people's dialogue is going to remain uh, our NGO as a think tank because it really served a very, very strategic role for, for, for us in terms of assisting us uh, to engage with society. And we believe it would really be very important for us to leave it as a platform that actually uh, assist our, us as a political party to, uh, to, uh, to ensure that our policies actually are in line with what society uh, actually expects. So the name of the party, you will see, in, you will um, observe uh, in the coming uh, days and weeks. And I uh, hope, uh, uh, Faith, that you can assist us um, uh, with some suggestions uh, for, for, for the name. name. In terms of uh, the economy and and uh, uh, and uh, this uh, the pandemic, we, we, we are concerned. Uh, personally, I'm concerned, I'm sure, uh, to, uh, to South Africans, very few South Africans actually missed my letter, that open letter that I wrote to the president uh, last week, actually really raising my concerns about uh, the, the, how the, the president and uh, his cabinet is actually handling uh, the situation, commended the president uh, for acting quickly. Uh, in, 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 in protecting us uh, against uh, this uh, uh, the health uh, the challenge that we are facing. But at the same time, really very critical of the president actually listening to, um, to, uh, to his cabinet regarding uh, economic matters. I think uh, really locking down the country uh, for, long, for so long, quite disastrous. I think all of us as South Africans uh, have had, and I hope we've had, Quite clear, not from politicians, uh, from the administrators. National Treasury came out very, very clear, giving us really terrible numbers uh, the last uh, the few, few weeks in terms of uh, the contraction of our economy, the number of jobs that South Africa is bound to lose. Last week, uh, the Commissioner of uh, the Revenue Services actually had to really call the press conference to indicate uh, the revenue shortfalls for the country. These are administrators, not politicians. Last night, including this morning, I listened uh, to, to States SA already expressing the very same concern about uh, the imminent uh, job losses. Already, uh, you know, as South African, South Africa, as you are aware, you know, our economy, uh, by the time the coronavirus uh, hit our shores, our, our economy was just about to really go into an ICU. It was already on a stretcher to go into an ICU. So the coronavirus just really became the final nail. So I think we need to really find a balance. We cannot, unfortunately, put our country and our people to really make a decision risking coronavirus infection or dying of hunger. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, losing jobs. I think it, it is really and totally unfair. It, like I said in my opening statement, I was totally shocked this morning at uh, 6 o'clock when I opened the news to learn that um, uh, uh, this uh, the cabinet and, and this group, it's actually going to an extent of actually deciding for me, an adult, a 60-year-old South African, what type of clothes I can buy and wear. I mean, this is total, total madness. This actually failed. Uh, do we want to go to the cultural revolution that uh, the Chinese tried uh, in the in the 50s and 60s under Mao? I think it's, it's total madness uh, that uh, we can really go to that level. So 
My view is that without any doubt, the coronavirus is a reality and we should not really take it for granted. But at the same time, if our economy is in big, big, big trouble. We need to find ways to open the economy, but at the same time, encourage our people to observe um, social distancing and other health related uh, the, the matters. Uh, Mr. Dittler, uh, the, the, regarding the mayoral candidates for the city of Johannesburg, I think when I announced uh, the formation of the party in January, we were already overwhelmed by the support received at the time. I made it clear to people of South Africa that I'm happy to make myself available uh, as a mayoral candidate uh, for the city of Johannesburg. However, one thing that we, I want uh, people of South Africa to be very, very clear about this, our mayors, our councillors, our public representatives are not going to really be elected by us as a political party. People of Johannesburg, people of Kuruleni, people of uh, uh, any municipality where we are going to contest, ultimately, our uh, voters, our supporters, our members are the ones who are going to finally decide who is the mayoral candidate Who's, the, 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 who's going to be uh, the ward councillor for their particular ward. That decision is not going to be taken by us uh, behind the, 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 those doors. So I am making myself available, but at the same time, we will obviously, if there are other the candidates who are making themselves available, we will obviously present this uh, to our members and our members will then decide uh, accordingly. In terms of the system of joining, I will leave that uh, to Ndatim uh, Mugubenia because I think this is one question even yesterday I said it's a possible question and I'd really like him to really share with you what we are doing as a new political party in terms of the preparation. So I think let me deal with other questions and this one about how people actually joining us, I will leave that uh, to, to Mr. Mugubenia to join. Who's funding us? Uh, Mr. De Klerk, I would wish, uh, um, I would really like you to, to really consider if you believe uh, you are unhappy with what's happening in our country. Because uh, up to now, since the 6th of January, in fact, before the launch, unfortunately, my family um, uh, the, the, took a decision to really support my initiative because we had no time to really wait. So far, up to 95% of uh, the millions are put towards uh, this project have really been the donations and the support from my family. But we've really been really overwhelmed by the support of ordinary South Africans. Pensioners actually going out to give us 20 rents or 50 rents. Actually, some of them have actually even actually uh, they've given us a debit on a month-to-month -month basis. So right now, uh, we, uh, the biggest uh, funding that we've received uh, from individuals is 100,000 rands from one, from one individual. So basically, we've been relegating 20 rands, 10 rands, and so forth. But I've really been fortunate enough that my family decided um, as part of our contribution to this country, as a gift to this nation, that uh, let us really create uh, a great future for, for, for our children. And Lizeka from News24, other municipalities that uh, we are targeting at this point in time, uh, the funds is busy engaging our structures, uh, our volunteers uh, throughout the country, where we are saying is, uh, please, if you want us uh, to, to, to come to any municipality outside Gauteng, outside the three that I've mentioned, Johannesburg, Kukuruleni, and Swane, we are happy to come, but we have to really have credible leadership. We have to really have the leadership that is there, not to save the, 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 the stomach. It is there about public service. Really demonstrate to us that there is a potential because we don't want to really to go and compete and contest a municipality where we're going to end up with two or three municipalities. We want to go for a win. So that is really the condition that, that, that for that. In terms of my views on coalitions, you know one thing that I think all of us as South Africans must appreciate and understand that coalition governments are not unique to South Africa. It's something that is not actually decided by politicians. Politicians all, all over the world would prefer to get outright majority. Who decides are the voters. 
and I demonstrated um, uh, in 2016 when I was put into a coalition arrangement to embrace and respect all political parties that served with me. Will I embrace uh, the coalition arrangement going forward? Without any doubt. I will go into a coalition arrangement with all any party that is going to contest so far that I'm aware of, with the exception of the ANC. I will not go into a coalition arrangement with the ANC, but I will go with the coalition arrangement with all other, uh, other parties. My relationship with the, with the EFF, I had a real great um, the relationship with the EFF. Uh, I've got great respect for them during my tenure, uh, during uh, my mayorship uh, uh, um, uh, uh, as a mayor of the city of Johannesburg, gave me the necessary support to save my country. Because one thing that I want South Africans uh, to really be aware of, it, particularly at local government level, go local government level is not about policies. It's about service delivery. It's about to ensure that uh, uh, the people have got toilets, people have got water, people have got safety and so forth. It's not about uh, the, the policy directions. It's about giving people dignity. And the AFF has been really very supportive. Have I been in touch with them ever since I left the city of Johannesburg? Unfortunately not. I have no reason whatsoever to, to, uh, to, 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 speak, to, to, to speak to the EFF or any other party. I've not spoken to, to, to any other party ever since I left because uh, the reason why people of this country, 19 million people did not vote because uh, people don't feel comfortable with existing political parties. So if ever I will talk to political parties outside the ANC, will be the day where we contest in a municipality where there's a coalition arrangement, we are happy to really talk uh, to any political parties. And I think the question of the lockdown, I've already dealt uh, with earlier on. Can I then uh, request uh, uh, that Afonsin Kubeni to deal with the question of uh, the systems of joining uh, the, our political systems and where, what measures uh, um, we are adopting? Michael, can you unmute uh, the Afonsin to really, uh, really take the audience through what excellent job the overwhelming support that we are getting on the ground on a daily basis. Thank you, Herman. Yeah. Funzi? Yeah, no, thank you very much, Michael, and uh, good morning to um, uh, the colleagues who are here and South Africans who are listening and, and watching at home. Um, <clears throat> look, we, <clears throat> in terms of, uh, I think, to respond to this guy in Apiwe um, at once, uh, how many members uh, have signed up? We have a, a portal on our website where people have been um, volunteering and actually signing up as volunteers. Uh, in that portal, we have received um, just close to about 15,000 people already um, signing up as volunteers. Um, and, uh, and we have been engaging with them um, throughout this lockdown. We, we have been um, uh, having what we call a visual uh, assemblies of, uh, of volunteers. We have um, done all the provinces. We have engaged with all our volunteers in all the nine provinces, as, as well as the, our first engagement. And we have now um, moved to engaging with them on the municipal level. We have engaged um, the, um, the, the, the three municipalities in Gauti, volunteers who are based there. Uh, in the coming days, we will now be moving to Mfuleni, to Rustenburg. We'll be going to Mafikeng. We'll be going to Cape Town, Nelson Mandela Bay engaging all our volunteers and um, uh, in, in, in the aim of uh, setting up um, uh, structures. The idea is that we want to have um, representatives um, um, of the People's Dialogue in every voting district um, 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 that we have in, uh, in our municipalities. If you look at uh, Johannesburg, we have at close to about 837 uh, voting districts. Um, we want to have representatives there. Um, we want to um, do it different from other parties where parties are focusing on uh, having representatives at the world level. Ours really is to go deep and, um, and make sure that we are entrenched to, to our communities um, by ensuring that our volunteers look at um, or take charge of small areas like voting districts and be able to reach as many vo voters and, and members of society there. So we, that's what we'll be doing. 
uh, how people uh, can um, um, can join us. Um, we are currently you know, engaging people on a voluntary basis. We are saying, if you want to be a volunteer of the People's Dialogue, please go into our website. Um, there's a volunteer uh, portal there that you can uh, sign up in and, um, and we'll be able to engage with you going forward. But what we'll do in the next uh, couple of weeks, we will um, put up the names of our volunteers who are representing us at, um, at ward level and at voting district level. Um, that information will be published on our website, on our Twitter page, with their contact numbers, um, so that you can be able to reach out to them if you want to join or you want to be part of the volunteers of the People's Dialogue on the ground. We are doing this to build structures on the ground that will be ready for the launch of the party. Remember, when we launch the party, we will then obviously announce as well the, the, the membership approach that we're going to take as a, as the party as a new party that will be starting at this moment we are taking all volunteers and all these volunteers will be working with us towards building or launching the organization in august at the launch of the of, of the party we will then announce a membership um a system that we will be using uh, to get people to be members of uh, of the of the of the party that will be formed at that day um so that's the approach that we are taking and we are quite excited with um the number of people that have come through. But as Herman has already indicated, ours really is to, is to get as many people as possible who are committed, um, who don't only come to us because they, they want to position themselves for positions at some municipality or another. We say to people, um, residents and, um, and society in that, in that municipality will be the one that will give us leaders that will represent us in, uh, in, uh, in local government elections. Your role as a volunteer is to go and send out the information and get people to be interested, to read and to understand what we stand for, and then be able to allow them to make a decision of who's the best person that they can be able to recommend to us to be the leader that will be leading us in uh, one municipality or another. So that's our approach at the moment. And I hope I've, uh, I've responded to both uh, Lisa Guy and, uh, and Apio on the questions that they've, uh, they've asked. Uh, thank you very much, Funzi. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to turn to a second round of questions, if we may. I have Natasha from the SABC and Claudia from Business Day. Uh, Natasha, I will unmute you. You'd like to go next? Okay, yes, please. Um, hi, everybody. Hi, Mr. Mashaba. It's great to see you again. <laughs> Um, so I was just reading through your report and it states there that 90% um, of the participants believe that corruption is, is a significant challenge to the country's growth prospects. Uh, they also believe that um, there's a connection between um, the ANC and corruption. So in light of this being said, I mean, we know that the president had um, allocated 500 billion for massive social relief and economic relief to help um, mitigate the impact of um, the COVID-19 virus. I just wanted to know from you, do you think that, I mean, there's this money that's actually allocated to help fight this fast spreading um, virus will be actually utilized uh, for that only? I mean, a lot of people have been saying that some people are actually going to loot this money. Some people have uh, accused ANC, um, you know, uh, members of, of already trying to find ways of looting this uh, uh, money, some examples through food parcels and etc. So I just wanted your reaction on that. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Um, and I'll see the final question from Cloudy Business Day. Uh, Cloudy, let me just uh, find you on my system. There we go. Thank you. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, cool. So um, I, an, I just wanted to find out basically you you spoke specifically saying like the like the, one of the principles will be focusing on that people who commit crimes must be severely punished. But it it kind of feels to me as if it's a little bit vague. So I want to ask you directly: Will the people's dialogue, well, at this moment as we know as the people's dialogue, be um, advocating for the death penalty? And if so, what um, proposals are you making to amend the Bill of Rights? And then I just wanted to find out. This is just in terms of your experience of actually creating a new political party during COVID. It's a really very tough environment where, as you know, all of your traditional routes and stuff aren't available to you. So what have been the biggest challenges? And I'm very interested in this also in terms of funding, given the fact that we all know what the state of our economy is like. Do people still continue funding political parties at this time? Thank you. 
thank you very much, Claudie. Um, Herman, would you like to come in there? Okay. Am I on mute? Yes, you are. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Natasha, lovely to see you uh, after many months of um, the lockdown. You and Cloudy, I uh, used to see you a lot uh, during my days as a mayor, but um, unfortunately, uh, the environment is such that we've got to be locked down at, at home. Very two good questions uh, you've asked um, around uh, um, the respondents, 90% of them being concerned about corruption. And and, um, and as you are aware, um, uh, Natasha, for me, uh, corruption, it's really something that I loathe. Uh, um, it's something that has uh, uh, dropped uh, particularly our poor people of their future because there's public representatives over the last 26 years stealing public monies into trillions, not even billions of money. They should have really built schools, uh, clinics, and facilities, and so forth. Uh, and the uh, people of this country are saying, enough, it's enough. Instead of people actually facing our criminal justice system, we see uh, the, 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 the commissions of inquiry. I think with due respect uh, to, to, to Judge Zondo, who's doing a great job and at the moment asking for more money. I'm saying to myself and South Africans are saying, no, let's take this money to put uh, these people in an open court of law. If they're found guilty, they must face the consequences. If uh, they are innocent, they must then be discharged. But, but those who are found guilty, let us ensure that we put them behind bars, but at the same time, make sure that we recover the money is lost because those, most of the money that uh, these people have stolen, we can actually get it uh, back. Regarding the 500 billion rands uh, the stimulus package that the, the president announced a um, few weeks ago, uh, you remember very well the South Africans, the following day I released uh, the, the statement um, to, to ask uh, the honestly appropriate uh, questions, wanting to know where's this 500 billion rands going to come from, firstly. And at the same time asking the president, uh, Mr. President, what measures are you going to put in place to ensure that your comrades don't steal this money? I think this is something for us as South Africans for the last 26 years, we've been subjected to, to, to people in the ANC. When the, a disaster like this happens, they take this to be an opportunity. That is before they start, actually started stealing food parcels of our people who are hungry. These are the very same people who've got the guts to steal money meant for the funeral of our icon, Nelson Mandela. That's why I wanted the president to say, Mr. President, fighting corruption, it is not about political rhetoric. It's about actually demonstrating. I even, in fact, uh, offered the president to say, Mr. President, we have some of the best forensic investigators in this country. Put them uh, there to work uh, alongside uh, the NPA to ensure that every cent of this 500 billion rents, if ever you get it, to ensure that um, no one steals it. But what happened a few days later, every single day, ever since uh, this uh, the COVID-19 hit uh, this country, we see ANC, the councillors, stealing left, right, and center, food parcels. So just imagine the day when we're going to start putting serious money into the equation without uh, the people actually facing the consequences. And that's really one area that for me personally, I feel the president has really failed us. He's allowing uh, the, the, the criminal elements within his own organization to continue looting public monies um, under his watch. So obviously if uh, anything like this happens under anyone's watch, then you are complicit. So we appeal to the president to ensure that um, if he does get the 500 billion rand, to please make sure that we protect it because I have concerns with this 500 billion rand, more especially coming from the, the financial institutions like the IMF and the World Bank, um, because I wanted to know, and I still want to know, is, is there money in the bank? And uh, two weeks ago, uh, National Treasury, the DG said, negotiations are going to take uh, five to six weeks for conclusion. But it did not really make sense to me when the president stood in front of the nation with this 500 billion rand stimulus uh, package with excitement, 
the president was giving an impression as if the money was already in the bank. I mean, we cannot really operate like this, take advantage of gullible uh, the people who were, because at the time, South Africans were looking for good news. We had just really been locked down and the president a week later stands up uh, in front of this nation that is a 500 billion rand stimulus package. I think it's, it's, uh, it's really something of major concern. Claudia, regarding uh, the punishment for criminal elements, um, without any doubt, and uh, this is my personal view, and we engaged uh, um, the, the, the society uh, during the, the, the People's Dialogue uh, the, the discussions, and I made this uh, the, uh, a personal um, the preference that uh, for me, as far as I'm concerned, given opportunity, rapist and first degree murders, I would not really lose a sleep to actually put such people, such criminals, uh, um, the, 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 to put them to sleep. I would not really hesitate. However, obviously as a political party, we have committed ourselves to engage. So it's a, something that, uh, yes, as a, as, a, as a political party, we will engage our members, we will engage the people who are behind us and really see at the end of the day, democracy will uh, will uh, will reign. At this point in time, it is my personal uh, the, the, the preference, and and some of the uh, of the people. But I think it's it's a it's a debate that I believe as South Africans we still need to engage on uh, to going forward. The strategy on uh, uh, starting a political party during the the COVID nineteen, I think, Claudia, uh, it's really been overwhelming uh, for us uh, when we, we we were locked down. You remember we're supposed to have uh, presented this uh, report on the 24th of March. Unfortunately, uh, we uh, that's when regulations started kicking in and we had to delay. But one thing we did, we had to think out of the box. We had to think out of the box. Here we are today addressing the world to, uh, using this type of platform. You know, if I can just really tell you, last week, um, um, uh, uh, Friday, I was actually deeply touched uh, to anyway addressing resident, our supporters in the city of Johannesburg, um, because we have uh, um, uh, this visual uh, town hall meetings. You know, one of them immediately, the, the, the last one I had on Friday afternoon, chaired by, by Funzi. Addressed uh, the, just for the, just on social media, four thousand three hundred people listened to me to address our supporters. Now you can imagine in a, can you have a, a public meeting with uh, the, with, with two three hundred people? You are lucky. Now we did not have to hire a wall. We did not have to really pay for security, but we managed to assemble four thousand three hundred people. Minimum that uh, that I could I could really see. Uh, this was on Facebook. I'm not even sure about other numbers of people who, who listen to us on, on Twitter and other platforms. So I think uh, we've got to really think out of the box. So whether COVID-19 or not, whether regulations or not, we are in the process of uh, the formation of our political party. We are going to continue having these meetings like I'm having now in my home. Funzi, as you are aware, it's at this home uh, somewhere in, in, the, in, the, in the West End. We are having people from all over the world. We've got some of um, our supporters all over the world, that be in the, in the UK, in Australia, in, um, in, in uh, the other parts of the world, uh, really watching this. This has been watched by millions of people. So. I think we need to really think out of the box. Yes, it is lovely, and we need to really be there on the ground, uh, ultimately, so that we can reach those who don't really have this type of infrastructure. But however, we're a law-abiding uh, the poli the political party or an organization. We respect the rule of law. So for as long as the regulations uh, are in place, we will respect them and use this type of platform uh, platforms uh, to really be able to engage. The question of funding, without any doubt, uh, uh, Cloudy, uh, it, it is difficult uh, for everyone. People, not just South Africans, the funding is a challenge all over the world because uh, people who've got money, um, they have lost 
have lost or the substantial amounts with the stocks and so forth, people losing jobs and so forth. Is it going to be easy for us? Absolutely not. We expect it is going to be very difficult, but we are confident that people of this country will come forward to assist us. And obviously, depending on the amount of money that uh, funding that we will receive, that also uh, will be a determining factor how many municipalities uh, the, we, we can attend. So, Claudia, I would really request you uh, for the future of your children. Please, I'm sure you've got our bank details. You give us 10 rents or five rents. Fortunate enough, uh, you don't have to really go to restaurants any longer and buy a bottle of wine. That money that you suppose you have used uh, to buy a bottle of wine uh, over the weekend with friends, put it towards uh, saving this country for the future of uh, the country. We can assure you, we look after your money. Thank you. I hope I've uh, covered uh, all the questions so far. Michael, the time allowing, um, I'm still available. Yes, uh, thank you, Herman. We do have two further questions that have been put forward in the meantime. Uh, first, if I may, I'd like to bring in Junior from City Press, Junior Kamala. Hi, Mr. Mashaba. Um, yeah. So I have, I just have one quick question. Um, there has been a lot of speculation with regards to um, Mandisa Masheho from the EFF, formerly with the EFF, and Advocate Dalim Pofu. Uh, will they be joining your new political party? Uh, thank you very much, Junior. Um, I see Faith, you would also like to come in with a further question? Yes, please. Um, I just wanted to check, uh, at the start of the, the, the process of the dialogue, Mr. Uh, Mashaba had a lot of interaction with Musi Maimane. I just wanted to know, where that interaction is and whether it's going to lead to him um, maybe uh, playing uh, some sort of role within the uh, formulation of the new party or whether that is out of the picture at the moment. Okay, um, those appear to be our final questions. So Herman, I'll hand back to you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Junior. Uh, Junior, uh, I've read uh, on more than one occasion, Dalim Pov is the first time that I hear of him. I've heard uh, of uh, Mandisa uh, Damashekhu, who I worked very, very closely with during the term, my term as the mayor of the city of Johannesburg as the, uh, the EFF um, uh, provincial leader. So I engaged uh, that, uh, here quite extensively and really created a good working relationship to really guide uh, to the thinking and so forth to ensure that uh, both of us were committed to saving our people and really make South Africa work. To say, you know what, Herman, let's forget about the poli our party's poli uh, the, uh, uh, policies. Let's actually focus on service delivery. And Mandisa played a real key role, key role working with some of his colleagues in the party to help us identify desperate communities where we can really work with them. And uh, that's how far it has uh, really ended. And obviously I have subsequently learned that uh, she's no longer with the EFF. Will we welcome her to really join us? Uh, as I've indicated during my speech, we will welcome anyone from any political party joining our uh, the, our political party when it is formed or even before it is formed. The only condition for us to accept you is your commitment to public service. We are not really inviting people who are looking for jobs. We are not looking for people who are there to serve political parties or their stomachs. So anyone uh, coming from any political party is actually most welcome to really join us. And um, we will engage uh, around uh, the, the, the advocate uh, Dalim Pofu. Unfortunately, this is the first time, Junior, that I've uh, really heard of, um, of uh, the, uh, the advocate Dalim Pofu being anywhere near the discussions with the People's Dialogue. As you are aware of uh, the, the known uh, uh, advocate uh, uh, Bofu for more than 30 years uh, in personal capacity, we've really had a great relationship over the years. And uh, today is uh, really one of our renowned 
uh, advocates uh, that uh, that uh, personally use uh, from time to time to really settle some of uh, the, the issues on my behalf. In terms of uh, uh, political alignment, that's not something uh, I've not really had an opportunity to really have such discussions with them. So, so it's actually the first time that I'm hearing of uh, uh, of uh, advocate uh, that Alim Bofu being associated uh, with us. Faith, uh, regarding the Tate Musimai Mani, I think uh, I've really tried to, to, to clarify this matter of two with South Africans. And I, I try as much as possible to be as honest as possible. I have no reason to, uh, to lie, more especially on serious matters. Uh, as I grow up, um, in terms of uh, my uh, reputation, my integrity, that's all I have. Um, I'm uh, an, an old man of over 60. And I think for me, uh, acting in good faith, it's always very important. And I've said uh, this, um, when I met uh, the Musi uh, since I left the, the DA, um, I remember I resigned from the DA on the 22nd of uh, October um, uh, last year. And um, then obviously on the 6th of December, I launched uh, the People's Dialogue. During that period of uh, leaving until the launch, I saw God, that they, uh, they my money on a personal basis uh, that came and we spent the evening here at my house uh, um, to let him know that in a few days time, I'll be launching uh, the People's Dialogue. Because prior to that, I was trying to really get across to him to let him know what I'm doing. But unfortunately, him being in Cape Town, I'm here in Johannesburg, it was not really possible. And uh, that in my mind, embraced what I was, I was doing and I embraced what he was doing. And subsequent to the launch of, uh, of the People's Dialogue, uh, beginning of this year, we when by the time we tried to engage with the really both of us realized that um, our projects were already at an advanced stage. The People's Dialogue was already a well-known fact. And, and uh, Mr. Maimani was already doing something on his own. And we decided to say to Musi, you know what? carry on with what you are doing. We will carry on with what you are doing. For whatever reason, if we get an opportunity to work one day, it'll be great. Personally, it'll be a great honor. It'll be a, a great uh, uh, privilege to really uh, get an opportunity to work with someone like Musi because I uh, hold him with high respect. Um, uh, he's, he's the kind of person that uh, I'll work with him anytime, but however, at the end of the day, I think uh, uh, Moses is busy with his uh, project. Uh, we're busy with ours. We are launching a political party. And uh, if uh, ever we get an opportunity that one day we work together, I can assure you, and I believe most South Africans will appreciate such an opportunity. But however, it cannot really be a forced marriage. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Herman. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, this has brought us to the end of the questions that have been posed. I think the only thing that is left is just a few matters of, of a housekeeping nature. So just to explain um, to members of the media that the speech from today will be circulated uh, a little bit later. Once we have processed the recording, we will circulate the recording as well. Um, but in the meantime, all that is left is to thank you very much for your attendance in these times in which you are so busy and to thank those who have tuned in via the live stream. Um, and that brings us to an end. Thank you all very much.